Good afternoon or evening, depending on where you are joining us from around the world. Welcome to the orientation for pathway and transfer students. My name is Shaz and my pronouns are she and her, and I am a student life coordinator within the student services department. The session will be recorded and I will reopen the chat at the end of the session where you'll be able to uh, ask your questions in the chat and our staff and students that are here will be more than happy to answer your questions. Joining us today are staff from Academic Pathways and the Transfer Department, as well as various departments within Seneca that will share information about the supports and services available to you. We are also joined by a panel of current and alumni student experts who have been through the Pathways and or transfer process and are here to share their journey and tips for success. We will have a question and answer period, as I mentioned, following the presentation and staff and student panels. And you can enter at that time your questions in the chat and we will be happy to answer them. To begin, we would like to acknowledge the land that Seneca is situated on. Seneca buildings here in Canada are situated on Turtle Island, which is North America. We are excited for you to join us on Turtle Island. I will now share a land acknowledgement video. Thank you for watching and recognizing the land that we are on. We will now begin with a presentation from the Academic Pathways and Transfer Department. June and Jennifer, welcome. Thank you, Shaz. So my name is June. Um, I'm the Inbound Academic Pathways Coordinator in the Academic Pathways Office, and I'm here with my colleague, Jennifer, um, who is the Outbound Academic Pathways Coordinator. Uh, so just to start to give you a little quick overview of our department and what we do. Um, so we provide services to students to, um, to help students build on their credential through a pathway into Seneca, within Seneca, or beyond Seneca. We have a lot of really helpful resources on our webpage, outlining pathway options, uh, eligibility requirements for those pathways. Um, we also help with questions on how students can apply. Um, in addition, we host really uh, great um, pathways events. We take part in a lot of these types of sessions, outlining our services, and we also do uh, virtual one-on-one -on -one sessions on a weekly basis. Uh, next slide. So, first, um, I wanted to share for our students that have pathwayed into Seneca or within Seneca from a diploma to a degree, and you'll be starting a degree this fall. One of the things that you might not know about, which you should, should definitely check out, is um, documents that we have available for our diploma to degree pathway students. Um, the first one here that you can see on this slide is called a block map. So what this is, um, depending on what degree you're in, it will show you the complete curriculum for your degree. And then the courses that you're receiving credit for or exemptions based on the diploma program that you've come from will be highlighted there um, in yellow. If there's any reach back courses, meaning courses from lower level semesters that you have to complete, those are highlighted in blue. Um, you can get these documents through our digital inbound transfer guide. So there's a QR code there that you can scan um, that will take you right to the web page. So you can look up uh, your previous diploma and what institution it came from in Ontario, whether that's Seneca or another college in Ontario. And then you can select the degree that you have moved into or will be moving into in the fall. And you will be able to get a copy of that block map. Next slide. The next thing that we have as well, another document in the same spot in our inbound transfer guide is what we call a completion plan. So the completion plan is just sort of your one stop easy way of determining, okay, these are the courses that I have left to complete. 
And in order to finish them as quickly as possible, this is the order of completion. So these are the courses I'm going to take in each semester. Um, it will also show you when you're going to be enrolling in your work term as well, because each degree has at least one mandatory work term that you do need to complete in order to graduate. So, like I said, you can also get that in the inbound transfer guide as well. So when you look up your pathway, both the block map and the completion plan will be there. Some of our pathways might have more than one completion plan, and that will depend on when you've pathwayed in. So if you're starting this fall 2022, if you see more than one, you will select the one that says fall. So just be aware of that. Next slide. So if you are um, looking, if you're having any issues when you're enrolling in your courses, your first step is definitely going to be connecting with your student advisor. So the way that you would find your student advisor is by logging into your student home account. You would click academic progress and then you would click on advisors, which will be on the left bottom hand side to see your um, academic advisors contact information. So if you're having any issues. You can't figure out why you can't get in, into a particular course as per your completion plan. Um, definitely reach out to them. There will be some pathways where um, you might have to get your student advisor to assist you. And if that's the case, there will be a notification underneath the, your completion plan that indicates which specific course you definitely need your student advisor's intervention. So you'll have to connect with them to see if they can help you with that. Next slide. Just before I stop talking, I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of entrance awards that are available to diploma graduates that are pursuing a degree at Seneca. So the first one is called the Diploma to Degree Scholarship. So that's a one-time monetary award of $2,500 to graduates of a Canadian diploma program who have an incoming GPA of at least 75% or a 3.3. Um, you can apply for that within the first 10 days of classes after you um, are enrolled in a full time course load. So you would enroll or sorry, you would apply for that on student home. The second one is called the renewable degree scholarship. So this one is open to students enrolled in any of Seneca's degree programs based on their incoming GPA from another post secondary program. So the scholarship is based on the maintenance of grades in the continuing years of your program and then you must also maintain full time status each year. So underneath you'll see the award amounts that are available based on your incoming grades. So both of these awards are open to international students who have completed a Canadian diploma program. So keep that in mind. Um, and also keep in mind that you can only receive one of them. So either the diploma to degree scholarship or the renewable degree scholarship. If you have questions about these scholarships, there's anything you're not sure of, you don't understand how to apply or the deadlines, or you want to see what other financial awards are available. There's a lot of different awards, bursary options, things like that. Um, please review the financial aid office website, or you can connect with your financial aid office advisor and they'd be more than willing to help you. So just some things to keep in mind um, for students that are pathwaying into a degree program. Uh, next slide. So I think at this point, we'll turn it over to my colleague, Jen. She's got some things to let you know. Thank you. Um, you can do the next slide, please. So my name is Jennifer Klusterman and I am the uh, academic pathways coordinator for outbound. Um, so majority of our, of my sort of job is helping students with diploma to degree pathways, which you're probably familiar with as you probably came into Seneca as part of a pathway. Um, but some of the other supports that, um, we can assist students with is going on to further education after Seneca and for a degree student, the most common type of education after would be uh, like a master's degree. So, although it may not be a pathway per se, we do support students who are looking to go on to master's um, and other graduate studies after Seneca. We help you with your application. We can help you with some of the research that's involved and just sort of guide you through that process because it can be a little bit intimidating. Um, and since, you know, if you're here as a pathway student, you're probably in an upper year, which means it's never too early to start thinking about this. Um, because we know that it does take quite a while. Um, a lot of research is involved and, and kind of narrowing down the, the programs um, that you might be interested in and getting that application piece together. 
Uh, every fall, we do the Masters and Graduate Studies Expo, which takes place over uh, a week usually. This year, it'll be virtual, where uh, we usually have between 15 and 20 universities um, speaking to students about uh, grad studies opportunities at their institutions. So talking about things like admission requirements and program offerings and financial aid info. So if grad studies is something that you may be interested in, I would recommend, um, you know, following us on social media or looking out for the notices that you might get uh, for that graduate studies expo in the fall. Uh, next slide, please. So if, if, it, if you do need help with your, your current pathway or you're thinking about other pathways and you're not really sure, um, how to access that, please make an appointment with us. Um, you can, you can do that on our website. Um, we've outlined that there on the screen. It's quite simple. We do these appointments on a weekly basis. You shouldn't have to wait more than a few days to get an appointment with us. Um, and we can sit down and have a chat and talk about, um, you know, what options might be available for you. Uh, next slide. Yeah, and here's our contact info. So um, maybe take a little screenshot or take a photo with your phone. Um, it's great to follow us on our socials. We do um, post all of our um, event information on there as well as sometimes we even have our partner institutions on there talking to students and giving information. Um, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email us. Uh, we we'll get back to students quite quickly and there's a ton of great resources on our website. We do have a resources tab um, and there is, I mean, specifically for graduate studies, there are a couple of tip sheets on there as well as YouTube videos of our past events. If you wanted to check those out too, we'd be happy to, to chat and connect with you. I think that's the last slide for us. Yep. Thank you, June and Jennifer, for that insightful overview of the academic pathways and transfer department and all of the services that are available to the students. Thanks, Shaz. No problem. Next up, we will begin with our services and supports panel. I will now call upon each staff member to say hello and introduce themselves before we start with the panel of questions. Uh, so we have Imran from Personal Counseling Services and Accessible Learning Services. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. Uh, like uh, Shaz said, my name is Imran and I'm an accessibility counselor based out of uh, Seneca and Unum. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. And we have Derek from the Learning Center. Thank you so much, Shaz. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone. So as Shaz said, my name is Derek, Derek Reiner, and I'm a Learning Center coordinator. And yes, it's a pleasure to be here with you. And my pronouns are him. And and it looks like you're on campus right now, so that's great. <laughs> and uh, Shanna Pearson from the Seneca Libraries. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Shanna Pearson. I'm a user services librarian, so I help to oversee a lot of the um, virtual and in-person research services um, across the four campuses. So thank you for joining us today. And last but not least, we have Hannah from Seneca Works. Hello everyone. Thank you, Shaz. I'm Hannah LKC. I'm a career strategist with our Seneca Works department. Nice to be here. Excellent. So we'll begin with Imran uh, from Personal Counseling Services and Accessible Learning Services. Uh, the first question that I have for you is what type of services does your department offer? Yeah, great question. So we have two distinct streams of services or supports that we offer. We have the personal counseling stream and we have the accessible learning services stream. So under the personal counseling stream, we have personal counselors who can provide individual counseling support to our students. And then we also have the student support and intervention specialist, so SSIS. So the SSIS is a, is a very exciting new position that we've started at Seneca and they provide case management, community resource navigation, um, support to students who might be in crisis, um, so that's the personal counseling side of the house. And then we have the accessible learning services um, uh, side of the house as well. So that consists of accessible learning counselors. So um, we provide accommodations and we'll get into what type of accommodations we can provide, but we have accessibility counselors who provide the academic accommodations for students. We also have assistive technologists who can support with disability related uh, technology needs that students might have. And then we also have the learning strategists who can help 
uh, with different learning strategies, including time management, uh, managing deadlines, managing assignments. Um, so a whole bunch of different services and supports that we have available within our counseling and accessibility department. And what types of things can a personal counselor help our students with? So our personal counselors can help with a myriad of uh, issues or concerns that you might have, uh, everything ranging from um, interpersonal conflicts if you're in a relationship and you're experiencing some challenges, uh, ranging from uh, abuse or being in an unsafe situation, uh, if you're experiencing difficulties related to substance use, alcohol use, um, mental health concerns around anxiety or depression, or just navigating the stress of being a student. There's a lot going on for students between managing all of these deadlines, managing your own home and family life, potentially working and having uh, employment and job uh, commitments as well. So there's a lot of stress and feelings of being overwhelmed that students may experience at various points. Um, so we help with a whole range of services and um, we also work with community partners. So if there are things like um, concerns such as eating disorders or um, OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder, we also make referrals outside to community partners who may be better suited to provide long-term therapy to our students. Um, so we provide in-house counseling support, which is more short-term solution focused. And then if you do require a resource referral, we can also facilitate that through our community um, resources that we have and, and the SSIS um, support specialists, as well as the counselors work together to provide those um, outside referrals. You made reference to academic accommodations. Can you expand a little bit more on what are academic accommodations and how can a student determine if they're eligible for these academic accommodations? I don't know why that word is so hard for me to say. Know, it's, a, it's a bit of a tongue twister, <laughs> eh? academic accommodations. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> So really what it comes down to is if you self-identify as a student who may be experiencing mental health challenges or you self-identify as having a learning disability and you have documentation to support that, or you may be experiencing some type of a temporary crisis or a physical injury or a mobility uh, concern that you have or a functional impairment, anything that prevents you from fully participating with your academic environment uh, free of barriers, then you may be eligible to receive support in the form of academic accommodations. So what academic accommodations aim to do is to level the playing field or to provide students with an opportunity to fully participate in the academic environment free of any barriers. Um, so common academic accommodations could include extra deadlines or deadline extensions, I should say, for assignments, extra time for tests and exams, it could also include the use of screen readers. So if you have a visual impairment and you need the text on your screen to be larger, we can facilitate that. Um, if you have um, hearing concerns or you have hearing impairment, we can provide sign language interpreters. We can provide note taking support for students who may have a fine motor impairments and you have difficulty writing or being able to take notes. We can provide support around that. So we have a whole range of services and supports that we can put in place. And I think the key takeaway is we tailor our supports and our services to your individual needs. So it's not really a one size fits all approach. We work with you as a student with the documentation you provide to understand what your needs are and what we can do to support those needs and to ensure that you're happy, you're healthy, and that we optimize your chances for success and, and really participation in an academic setting. So definitely if you feel like you might identify as a student who needs those supports, reach out to our office and, and we'll discuss how you can reach out to our office um, uh, later on in this presentation as well. So um, you mentioned how they can get in touch with you. So I'll just go to that question right now and then come back to the last one. So how do students register with your department to meet a counselor and get in touch with one of the counselors? Yeah, so very quickly, it's it's just a very simple process. You can search up our contact information on the Seneca homepage. It's the Seneca Counseling and Accessibility page. Um, so just a quick Google search, you can find that page on the Seneca website. Um, and from there, we'll have contact information for each of the campuses. So each of our campuses has um, an office assistant. So the easiest way to get in touch with us is to contact the campus that you're affiliated with speak with the office assistant, let them know what type of supports you're looking for. So you might want personal counseling support or you might want accessibility supports or academic accommodations. So give us a call 
Um, you'll, your call will be answered by an office assistant who will kind of help you navigate the system and put you and direct you to the right stream that, that meets your needs. Uh, we're also available via email at SenecaCNAS at SenecaCollege.ca. And again, that information would be available on our homepage at Seneca College. Um, so definitely reach out if you need that support. And if you feel like you might benefit from academic accommodations, do check out the website because it will provide you with some information on what type of documentation you can present to our office um, to become eligible or to be eligible for academic accommodations. But even if you don't have that documentation, feel free to give our office um, a call and we can guide you through that process after we meet with you to help you complete that documentation that, that's required. And if the students were to take advantage of all of these opportunities and use the department services, would they be identified as a student with a disability on their student record? Absolutely not. And that's a great question. And I think um, a few students might be hesitant, but I've heard a few students who have asked that question, you know, I don't want to be identified or I, I don't want this to be on my transcript or on my diploma or my degree. And, and the answer is no, you will not be identified on any kind of uh, documentation as a student receiving these supports. Um, we also don't even disclose the nature of your disability or, or uh, medical condition to your professors without consent. Um, really, we just we keep the documents internal and we reach out to, to faculty and say, you know, the student has reached out. We've confirmed that the student needs these supports and these are the supports that the student needs. So not only is it not identified on, on any document, but without the student consent, we don't even disclose um, any information to uh, faculty. So it's it's important for all students to feel confident that our that our conversations are in confidence and are confidential. So it is a confidential service. It's a free service and it's a voluntary service, which means that uh, it is based on self referral. So if you feel like it's a service that you need, please do uh, take the initiative and be proactive and reach out to our offices and we'd be more than happy to support you. Thank you very much, Imran. So I definitely do recommend that everyone take advantage of the services that are available. There's lots of extra help and support that is there for you. Up next, I'd like to introduce and welcome back again, Derek from the Learning Center. No, there you go. You've gotten rid of the mask now, so we can hear you a little bit better. So that's great. <laughs> My apologies. So Right at when you introduced me earlier, I started to lose my voice a bit as well. So great timing. My apologies. <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, so we'll just get right into it. If a student is having difficulty with a specific course, uh, sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit there. First of all, tell me about the services first that the Learning Center offers, and then we'll go into the next question. So the Learning Center provides academic support in a number of different ways. So, for example, students will utilize our service to receive one on one support. So we have a lot of tutors that can help in many different areas and they will help you in terms of suggestions, recommendations. You can show them work that you've done and work that you're preparing and they will help you. So, again, there's many different ways in which they can help you in terms of one on one appointments. And then we also have group sessions. So, for example, we've been running virtual workshops, whether they be writing workshops, study skills workshops excuse me, conversation clubs. And then we also have a lot of online resources on our site. So students are always welcome to download tip sheets. We also have short videos that they can look at. So we try and provide support in a number of different ways. And again, it's to support students academically. We want to make sure that students know they don't have to struggle through any challenges on their own, that they always have the support behind them. And as mentioned earlier, our service is also confidential. So we don't report back to your teachers. It's basically up to you if you want to let your instructor know that you're pursuing tutoring, but again, we'll never report back. And if a student is having difficulty with a specific course, what services specifically from the Learning Center would you recommend? Great question. So, in terms of the one on one tutoring, and we try and offer help in as many areas as we can. So, we'll try and cover as many of the programs at different campuses as possible. As well, we offer a lot of different supports in the area of English. So one thing I do encourage everyone to do is to let us know if ever you check out our service and you find that you're not seeing your particular program or courses represented in terms of what we can offer, as we depend very much on you, the student, to let us know what areas you're looking for help in. So to give you an example, someone may book an appointment for an accounting course, and then you'd be able to meet with a tutor, 
Right now, most of our tutoring is taking place virtually, so you would meet on Zoom, but we are looking to move quite a bit of our tutoring back onto campus as we move into the fall semester. So a lot of students and their programs will have a choice. We'll have a hybrid model where you'll either be able to choose between on-campus tutoring or to meet with a tutor virtually. And again, we will provide you with more detail to let you know which programs that option is available for. But again, you could meet with a tutor, say for accounting, and you could go through different practice problems, ask questions, share material. So again, it's up to you how you wanna make use of the session. And we'll try and cover, as I mentioned earlier, as many programs and courses as we can. And then we also have a lot of help, as I mentioned, in English. So a lot of students will book appointments to receive help for writing, for reading comprehension. Students who do not speak English as their first language may book to practice their speaking skills, or English may be your first language and you'd like to practice a presentation, for example. That's also possible. And then we also have study skills help. So we hear from a lot of students who have many, many different commitments. So they may be having a little bit of trouble juggling those commitments. So they may choose to meet with one of our academic coaches to work on time management or maybe to improve their note-taking skills. And we have a program called STRIVE. And STRIVE helps students not only with study skills, such as the ones I've mentioned, but also with life skills in general. So we do find that a lot of students take advantage of this program because again, they're trying to find a way to balance everything that's going on in their lives. And STRIVE can definitely help you with that. And one of the really nice things too is that you can book three appointments per week and each appointment lasts for approximately one hour. The reason I say approximately is the tutor may just need a couple minutes to get ready for their next appointment, but again, three every week. And in addition to those three appointments, you can also attend the group sessions I've mentioned. So English workshops, course specific workshops, as well as study skills workshops. And again, you can also check out the resources on our site and there's no extra charge for any of the services that are offered through the Learning Center. And can you tell us a little bit more about the tutors? Are they students? Are they staff? Another great question. So the peer tutors are actually senior students. So they have to be in at least their third term and they have they've gone through a rigid screening process. So they have to have excellent grades, great interpersonal skills, and each of them has their own tutoring style, just like each student has their different their own learning style. So we do encourage you to try different tutors to see which ones you're most comfortable with when you do have that option. And what's really nice about the fact that they're peer tutors is not only can you ask them specific questions about, say, an assignment or if you're preparing for a test or a quiz or an exam, but you may want to ask them what their experience has been like or was like when they took the courses that you're going through at the time. So they can provide you with strategies, let you know what worked for them, suggestions in terms of, again, um, different methods that may have worked well for them. So it's really nice to have that peer-to-peer -peer contact in the appointment. And then our English tutors are different. They're actually not students. They're individuals who have been specially certified in the area of English. So they've gone through a lot of training Again, they all have their different tutoring styles, and we have many English tutors who are available through our booking system. So you'd be able to choose, see which ones you're most comfortable with. And English is the area that we're most heavily booked in. There's a lot of students want to work on their writing, and again, they may also want to work on their reading comprehension or possibly their speaking skills. But you would be able to meet with any of these tutors, whether course specific or English, within your three appointments per week. And in addition, you could also book with one of our staff members who help with academic coaching if you again want to work on study skills. So I would encourage you to again, try different tutors just to see who you're most comfortable with and always let us know if you have any questions or concerns. And what is the process for booking an appointment with the tutors? So it's really quick. Um, thankfully, it's just a few clicks. So you can actually access our site through MySeneca. So when you go to your MySeneca site, you'll see a uh, uh, top or not, sorry, a heading that says student support. And then underneath it, one of the subheadings says academic. You'll actually see us listed amongst the services when you click on academic. And once you click on that learning center symbol, it'll take you straight to our site. And from our site, you would be able, you have different pathways from which you can click on to reach our booking system. And as well, you'll see our resources are available. But once you reach our booking system, it's just a matter of choosing the area or course that you'd like help for. You can pick amongst the days and times. We're open from Monday to Friday um, because now we also have the virtual option. We're open. We're able to open much later. So we're going to be opening at least until seven virtually. 
And then you also will have the opportunity to pick your tutor, as you'll see tutors' names, and you're able to book up to six days in advance, maximum and minimum. If a spot's available, you can book it 30 minutes before. And you'll also be able to access our group sessions, our workshops, our conversation clubs through the same site that you go to. Thank you very much, Derek. Uh, so these services are already included in your tuition. There's absolutely no additional cost for them. So I definitely recommend and encourage you to take advantage of the tutoring, supported learning groups and workshops that are available to all students. Please welcome Shanna to share information about the library and their available uh, services as well. Uh, Seneca Libraries has become a predominantly virtual library. So what do students need to know about navigating your in-person spaces and collections versus online collections and services? Okay, great question, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, for those of you joining us in the fall semester and specifically on campus, I'm really happy to report that all four campus libraries will be open. Um, all of the quiet study spaces are opening up, which is fantastic news. Um, they were closed, certain sections were closed. Um, so within those spaces, you'll find a range of different study areas. So quiet study, uh, collaborative zones where you can work a little bit louder um, on group projects. Um, and specifically what's very popular within our spaces are our group study rooms. So we have a range of rooms that are bookable online up to seven days in advance. So if you're going to programs where you're required to do a lot of group projects, I highly encourage you to check out group study rooms. It's a quiet space you can book for two hours at a time um, in a group um, and have kind of a private space to work on that. Um, another exciting thing is that you will have access to the print collection from the fall. Um, so that's wonderful for those of you going to programs in the arts and certain areas where um, print is um, something that's very popular with our students. Uh, with that being said, um, and all of our wonderful physical spaces, um, it's good for you to know that 95% of our collection is online and accessible 24-7 through our library website. So all of the e-resources, so e-books, articles, reading videos, and a lot of other resources are available to you free of charge 24-7 through our website. So you can go through there and access all the resources and services that we offer, uh, which remain predominantly virtual at this time. Uh, what services does the library offer to help degree students with research and citation? Excellent question. Um, so we have a range of wonderful services, but I think the most popular uh, with our incoming degree students are the research appointments that we provide. Um, so this is a uh, service that we offer. You're, it enables you to book a 50 minute session, so five zero, uh, with a liaison librarian who specializes and has more in-depth knowledge in the program or field that you're studying in. And through these 50 minute virtual sessions, you can uh, work with the liaison, we utilize screen sharing software um, and videos so that we can walk you through the different strategies and tools that you can use uh, to find research for maybe more complex or in-depth assignments. So in the upper semester courses and degrees, uh, you're often asked to do a lot of in-depth research and sometimes um, a little help from a liaison these on my brain goes a long way. So I'd say definitely uh, the bookable research appointments. Again, they can be um, booked 24 or more hours in advance. That means if this is something you're interested in, you could just go to our website and uh, pick a time slot that works for you. Um, so in addition to supporting students heavily, uh, obviously with their research and academic assignments, we also do um, provide a lot of support to students learning how or, or trying to cite their sources in MLA or AP uh, format. Um, so many of you coming uh, to Seneca from previous uh, programs or uh, will be familiar with citing sources, just giving credit to um, any of the sources you put into an academic paper. Um, so if you're not sure where to start when you start at Seneca, or maybe you're going into a program that is now asking you to do a citation style that you're not familiar with, the library has a lot of uh, great resources to help. Um, those are in the form of uh, drop-in live webinars or sessions that you can attend uh, to learn more about citation and to ask your questions live with um, another library staff member. We have tons of online uh, self-paced um, resources to learn citation, including our AP and MLA citation, which are heavily used by all of our students. It provides examples on how to cite all types of sources uh, for your assignments so you can avoid plagiarism. Um, 
So I would, uh, definitely check out those resources and services um, when you come in uh, and start your program. Okay. And um, what is the Sandbox and what services and resources does it offer? Yep, excellent question. So some people get excited that they can come play in a Sandbox. Uh, Literally, but um, it is actually the sandbox is a department within the library and the college and it's a digital media hub that helps students uh, learn their digital literacy skills. So, basically, um, if you're entering into a program and your, your professor has asked you to create a digital assignment, so anything from an infographic to a video to a website uh, to audio, uh, the sandbox is what you're going to want to check out. Um, we provide support through the sandbox in many different ways. So again, you can book a one on one with a knowledgeable staff member who can help you um, create infographics or videos. We have tons of online resources, really, really good um, guides that'll walk you through how to create all these different types of digital assignments that maybe you haven't created in the past. So if it's an infographic, for instance, the guide will provide you with uh, suggestions of free uh, software tools that you can use, where you can find um, royalty free images. So it's a really great service and department within Seneca that I would highly recommend that you check out if you have to create a digital assignment. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, and come the fall when we are opening up more of our, our spaces, the Sandbox does have um, studios that you can book and video equipment to rent uh, that has green screens and editing equipment as well. So I just wanted to mention that there are uh, studio spaces that you can uh, book online uh, for the fall as well. Okay. Amazing. I'm really glad that you clarified what the sandbox is and how cool it is to use because I will be honest, the kid in me right away thought of sand and let's go play. <laughs> but no, that's not what it is. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your Ask Us live chat service? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as the name suggests, it is a live chat service that we provide to students. Um, so, if you are ever in need of any research or citation support, or even you need to find a room number and you're not sure who else to ask, um, if you go to Seneca Library's website, any of the pages where you see a circle that says Ask Us Live, you can click on that. Just put in your name and your question, and a knowledgeable staff member will answer you right away. It's, it's live, we're not robots. Um, on the other end and walk you through your question and hopefully get the answer that you need. So that's again available um, nine to five right now online with extended hours into the fall. Um, and again, if you have any research or citation questions and we get a lot of citation questions through Ask Us, you can just pop on there and get your answers immediately. And with that being said, if it is after hours like 2 a.m., uh, through our Ask Us uh, service, we do have an FAQ knowledge base. So if it's 2 in the morning and you need to find peer-reviewed articles and don't know where to start, you can search a knowledge base of about 400 questions and, again, hopefully get an answer that you need right away. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's great to hear. So thank you very much for all of that information. And I know that Shanna mentioned things are opening back up on campus. So if you are going to be coming on campus, just remember that Seneca does have a vaccination policy and you will need to have your vac vaccination proof of receipts uploaded to the Seneca Safe app, as well as you'll need a virtual one card that you'll just tap to come into any of the campus entrances. They are still uh, making that mandatory for coming on campus. So just so there's no surprises for anybody that's coming on campus, just make sure that uh, you have all of those requirements. Now, many may be curious about what happens after Seneca, what next? What can I do and how can I make myself more marketable for the job market or even to find a job now while I'm studying uh, at Seneca? So welcome Hannah from the Seneca Works Department. Thank you for joining us. Thank you uh, for having me. <laughs> so I kind of hinted with a little bit of those uh, teaser questions, but what is the main reason a student would come to your department? Well, it's uh, pretty much exactly like you said, a lot of students actually, I find that they say, I wish I knew that you were there uh, before I graduated. So I think uh, whether you're in your second or third or first or last semester, it's a, a great place to uh, start navigating not only your ideas about your career, but also thinking about what type of uh, options are out there for you after you graduate. 
-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you're absolutely Please correct. It's, it's okay. It's never too late or too early to get exactly. started. Yeah. Exactly. There are a lot of services and resources that we help students with, including um, helping students on identify their potential career options that are out there. Um, not only help define and map their careers, but also help them develop a really good, effective job search uh, plan, uh, as well as arm them with the skills necessary to do a good job search. Um, we do uh, also try to connect a lot of our employers with uh, our students uh, through either employment opportunities or career fairs or information sessions that we have. So there's uh, a lot of times where employers want to meet uh, and uh, network with students. So we try to facilitate and host those sessions for students to come and meet uh, with our employers and have conversations and what network and learn about uh, opportunities out there. So it's a really great uh, place to uh, navigate your um, um, information about uh, careers and jobs and the world of work. I know that some of the services and activities are still closed to on person, but how mm -hmm. can students access the services virtually? Yeah, so we do have our website and you can go to our Seneca Works website. Uh, you can uh, log in and it's a one stop shop. I like to call it that way in terms of accessing everything from uh, being able to attend uh, workshops to navigating. Um, you know, appointments, uh, you can book your appointments with the career strategist or with the resume uh, clinic uh, for critiquing your resume and your cover letter uh, to attending uh, career fairs as well as information sessions uh, or any of our virtual events that we have. Um, one thing I neglected to say is our services are available for students while you're in school and also after you graduate for two years. And we're very lucky. Uh, we're one of the very few university and colleges that offer it for two years after graduation. So that includes all services resources as well as our job board. Excellent. And you did mention uh, the career fairs and information sessions. Are there any upcoming events that you would like students to be aware of? Yes, uh, we do have a variety of events happening and right now on our calendar of events, you will be able to see all of our fall offerings for all of the workshops. So, uh, do have workshops on everything that you need that would help you with your career planning development as well as your job search. So, uh, there are. Uh, workshops around career planning, identifying your skills, uh, looking at how to look for work, uh, job search, writing a good resume and a cover letter, learning how to do interviews. Um, if you do find a job, what are some of the business etiquette skills that you need to kind of keep in mind when you are on the job and a lot more uh, workshops like that that we have developed and are available for students. Additional to that, we do have a session for incoming and new students, uh, and it's called uh, Career uh, Kickstart Your Career Planning Week. So it's all about um, kickstarting your career by attending a variety of workshops and panels and demos and uh, career chats, and uh, it's uh, on October. It's October. Uh, 11th to the 14th, so that whole week, there are events specifically dedicated to our incoming students, but everybody's also welcome to attend it. Um, our virtual career fair week is October the 24th to the 28th, and that is a whole week full of activities with our employers. Um, and each employer uh, normally have around uh, between 60 or to 70 employers that have attended our career fairs and they're all virtual events and you can uh, log in and uh, register for the event that you want to attend. And it's usually, uh, you know, a group meeting with the employer uh, that is coming to hire and uh, 
recruit from the different programs that we have. So great opportunities for our students to meet and network with our employers that way as well. So these are the main three upcoming events, but throughout the year, we also have, as I said, information sessions for the variety of employers that do come on campus. Uh, sorry, virtually, um, let me just uh, clarify that. So there, those are all virtual events right now, uh, as well as, um, um, opportunities for you to connect with those uh, employers. Um, our um, also panels uh, of uh, during the fall and the winter, those are opportunities for uh, students to come and have a conversation with uh, employers that are working in the field. Those are professionals that have worked in a specific career area and they come back and give back to students by, you know, telling them about their uh, career journey and how they transitioned in terms of um, from being in school to the world of work. So also great opportunities to get insight and learn from professionals and those are career. So lots and lots of opportunities to connect and so lots of great networking opportunities, which is extremely yes. important in Absolutely. addition to your academic studies for sure. Exactly. Exactly. And how can students look for jobs that are available to Seneca students? Is there an online portal that they can access? Yeah. How they find them? Yeah. So through our website, uh, every student has access to our Seneca Works job portal. And through the job portal, you're able to access full-time, part-time, uh, contract, and uh, as well as casual positions. So employers that are interested in hiring Seneca students uh, will post jobs with us. And um, you would go in, take a look at the job portal and look at the applications that are needed for each of the jobs that apply directly to each position. And we have lots and lots of jobs that are uh, that are on the board throughout the semester. So please do uh, take advantage of that. And as I said before, you do have access to it for two years. Perfect. Excellent. And how can students contact the Seneca Works Department directly? So I have, um, I do have a link that I can add it in the chat if I'm able to, but you can. You can, you can yeah. add it uh, towards the end when I open back up the chat for now, absolutely. right now it's closed, absolutely. but absolutely we can put all the links into the chat when I reopen yeah. it. Yeah. And there is definitely access from our website. There's a, um, an email and there's a telephone number that you can connect with our uh, with our staff as well. And um, there we do have uh, many career strategists on staff to help you um, answer your questions as well as with our resume uh, critique appointments. You can book any of those appointments, resume, cover letter, uh, appointment to discuss your career planning and strategy or job search as well as interview, we do have practice interviews. So all of those are available as appointments to book uh, and connect with one of our staff to have a conversation. Um, all, of, all of them are virtual appointments as well. Excellent, that's great. Thank you very much, Hannah, you for welcome. that insightful information. My and pleasure. Thank you. Now I would like to move to the student panel who have been eagerly waiting to share their journey with transferring, whether it was from a Seneca diploma to a Seneca degree or a Seneca diploma to somewhere external. We do have a lot of experience that will be shared uh, with you all today, and we're very excited to have them all here. So without further ado, I'm going to ask all of our student panel members to please turn on your cameras if you haven't already. And uh, we are going to get started with introducing everyone. Uh, so at first, I would uh, call on uh, Adabola to go ahead and introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adabola Adifi, and I um, graduated from the Early Childhood Education and Child Development Program at Seneca College. I'm happy to be here today. Next up, we have Aiden. Hi, everyone. I'm Aiden D'Souza. 
I have graduated from uh, three different programs at Seneca from the School of Public Safety. I've also uh, been here since the age of eight years old at Seneca summer camps. Um, and now I'm working full time at the college in the new service hub department and also continuing my degree um, in the bachelor's of interdisciplinary studies. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. We keep trying, but he just, just keeps staying. <laughs> Joseph. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I graduated from the two-year business diploma at Seneca, and I'm currently pursuing my international business management degree at Seneca. And similar to Aiden, I also work at Seneca as well as recruitment and conversion coordinator. Yep. Once we graduate you, we still keep you. We've had Adabola come back a few times. We've had Shana come back a few times. And so speaking of her, I'll pass it over to Shana to please go ahead and introduce yourself as well, last but not least. Hi, so my name is Shana Morris. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And for myself, I graduated from the therapeutic recreation degree program. And I am currently now an instructor as well at a college where I am teaching the recreation therapy program. I completed a master's as well in sci uh, the master's of science and rehabilitation science. Excellent. So, thank you all for telling us a little bit about your academic and career journey. We're always excited to hear from our students past and current. Uh, so, that's really great. We'll start with the 1st question. Uh, what would be your advice for new students who are beginning their journey at Seneca? And I'll pass this 1 to Shana and Aiden. Yeah, so my advice for those that are coming into the college now from a diploma to a degree program or just in general attending Seneca it's really important to ask questions everybody is so helpful at Seneca it is wonderful it's I'm a person that loves to ask questions so all of my questions were always answered everybody was always really happy to help me it helped me to navigate to find the scholarships and bursaries. It helped me to know more about the library resources. I also knew more about opportunities that were available within my program for different certifications. Making sure as well you are doing the activities that are available. There's so much to offer at Seneca at all of their campuses. So definitely making sure that you are pursuing all of those different avenues. Yeah, that's great advice to Shana. Um, you have to touch on that. Apply for scholarships, awards, bursaries. Seneca has millions of dollars um, in financial aid every year and applications open in September. So make sure to fill out that applications. Um, also get involved. There's uh, so much to do here, whether it's athletics and recreation, um, the smile mentoring, different clubs with our student federation. Make time, make time to like do something outside of the classroom. It does help you um, and gives you some, a way to relieve leave your stress um, outside of the assignments and everything like that. Um, one thing that I used more um, when I started my degree is the library. They have so much support, um, whether it's research assignments or helping you find different um, e-books available. Um, so make use of all those services and it will help you down the road. So you're hearing that connection with us having the service areas tell you about the services and now you're hearing it firsthand from the students that yes, those services actually do help and we're not just saying it for the sake of saying it. <laughs> so it's, thank you for that validation, both of you, Shana and Aiden. Uh, so we'll go to the next question uh, to Aiden and Joseph. Uh, why did you decide to continue your degree at Seneca after graduating from the diploma program? Uh, for me, I wanted to really build on what I've learned in, in my business diploma. Um, I did go into a general business diploma because I wanted to kind of explore my interests and see what area I wanted to pursue. So going into international business has really helped me build on my diploma by gaining the theoretical experience and also the practical experience that I'll be getting in the work term later on that will build on the foundations I've gained in the business diploma and really help me explore what I want to do long term. Excellent. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, great experience, Joseph. Um, for me personally, um, I had a lot of like transfer credits and I also wanted to get my degree because I knew when it came to like a job or a promotion at work, um, they will always look at your education and a degree is amazing to have on a resume. 
um, and it will help you land that promotion um, at the end of the day when you're starting to apply for jobs or starting to upgrade um, in your career. Um, but back to the transfer credits, when um, you know I went from a diploma to a degree, it would only take me around like two years to complete. Plus, I did a graduate certificate, so it reduced the time um, even you know more. So I was really happy about that. Excellent. And, uh, you know, talking about like moving from 1 program to the other Shana and Adabola, what was the transition like for you going from a diploma program to a degree in terms of academic expectations? So, for me, it was very nerve wracking at 1st. Um, something I thought about for a long time was that it was just a diploma degree wasn't in my cards. And from there, I, when I went and. I started my degree at the transition, as I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of people that were there to support the program coordinator. I was able to access again, those library resources. I felt a lot of support from all of the staff at Seneca. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's really good to attend all classes, making sure that you're preparing for your test. That really helps as well to make sure you have that transition from that diploma to that degree. Yeah, so the transition for me was, um, I would say, very smooth because my diploma program was in the School of Early Childhood Education and also my degree program was in the same um, School of Early Childhood Education. So uh, it was um, a lot of my professors in the diploma program were still teaching in the degree program. I saw that the um, expectations in terms of um, academic writing was a lot higher. Uh, for the degree program, but I was able to get all the support that I needed because all the professors are always very supportive. And um, there's also a lot of resources at Seneca, the library that I made use of, and then uh, that helped me to be able to quickly bridge the gap that I thought I found. <laughs> and um, it was a very, it was a very smooth uh, transition. I think it was only the first semester that I found a little bit um, kind of difficult, but from the second semester, it was very, Everything went smoothly. Smooth yeah. sailing. <laughs> Happy to hear that. Uh, so, Joseph and Shayna, what are some tips or suggestions that you have for someone that's thinking about pursuing another credential once they've completed the one they currently are in? So, definitely do your research and really make use of the resources that Seneca has to offer. I know Jennifer just recently talked about those grad expos and her portfolio really helping students build on those credentials either at Seneca or at a partner institution we have pathways with. So um, really start your research early on. I myself started doing it right when I started my degree in my third year because they really need you to start applying. Um, I would say probably a year in advance. I guess Shana can give more information as a master's student, but um, it's really great to find those supports because you can really narrow down what your options are. And if you know that at the end of the day, you want to pursue a master's, you have that motivation to really want to do well in your degree program because your master's application will really depend on how well you did in your undergraduate program, as well as your professional experience outside your program. And really look at other options as well, right? Master's programs are great, but there may be postgraduate certificates. Seneca has so many postgraduate programs that you may pursue if you already have your degree or pursuing your degree. So really finding that program that would be best for you um, once you graduate from Seneca with your degree. Yeah, so I definitely want to echo everything that Joseph just said. I mean, research or as early on as possible. As soon as you have that idea in your head that, you know, I want to pursue and just like Joseph said, it doesn't have to be a master's. It could be another diploma, another degree. It could be a postgraduate certificate. It could also be your master's. It's whatever path you want to choose. And so, yeah, that research is really important. And then, yeah, talking with the transfer pathways, making sure you understand the expectations where what grades do I need to have? It helps you to really work towards that. And also something that I found really helpful was that a lot of my professors at Seneca had a master's and a PhD. And with that, I was able to ask them, well, what did you do? How did you get into there? Do you have any tips for me? Could you be a recommendation for me? And it was, of course, you have to build that rapport with your professors before you can ask for that recommendation. So that's something to really keep in mind as well as making sure that you are, as I mentioned earlier, attending all classes, showing that you're working hard so that you're able to receive those recommendations that really help you to get that further step. 
So I heard a very important thing there is do your research. Absolutely. Reach out to the pathway staff. They're here to assist and help. There's degree transfer guides that you can take a look at to see where you can move forward from Seneca using your diploma or your credentials uh, to go ahead and succeed in other credentials as well. So definitely do your research and as they said, just check in with your professors to networking. You never know what they're going to also provide you with great tips and suggestions as well. So it's fantastic. Um, Aiden and Adabola, I know that both of you were heavily involved on uh, extracurricular activities during your studies. So if you could give us a little insight on what extracurricular activities you were involved in that you took part in campus. Yeah, absolutely. Ways to get involved, yeah. Yeah, so I was part of uh, many different activities on campus. Uh, it did help me like a lot because um, I needed that balance in my life. One was uh, cross country running with the Seneca Sting. That was really fun. I was did that for about two years. Um, if you don't want to run at the varsity level, there's intramural sports, there's extramural sports, basketball, soccer, badminton. Um, you know, so many different sports, uh, both indoor and outdoor, that you can get involved in. Um, you can even just use our fitness center. There's so many ways to meet other people as well. Um, we have it at all of our four campuses now um, reopened. We, there was also the Smile Mentoring Program that I was a part of. Um, that was a really great initiative. I started it when I first came to Seneca. Um, and then I actually became a mentor myself. Um, so I got to mentor like um, hundreds of students throughout my years and meet so many amazing people, build connections, which I really enjoyed. Um, also, even just getting a job on campus, that's a great way to network um, and get involved with the Seneca community. Uh, I know I met like Joseph at one of the open houses a few years back and, uh, you know, we work together now. Um, so it's been an amazing journey, just taking the time to look for opportunities and, you know, joining them, making sure um, I have a balanced experience outside of the classroom as well. Yeah, so I also um, had a lot of um experience. I participated in a lot of activities at Seneca. Uh, I was a small mentor for almost all my time at Seneca. I worked at a learning center because I saw that I could uh, put some extra time to do that. I was a tutor in the, for the EC Early Childhood Education Program and also the um, Child Development Degree Program. I also started a club, uh, the Resilient um, Individuals Club. Uh, it was also a good time connecting with the people uh, in that um, department. And um, I was also running a program in the community. So I would come to the college and um, speak to people about what I was doing in the community and sometimes get resources from the school, like students who donate items, and then we'll take them to the shelter. Uh, yeah, so those were some of the activities that I did at the college. I was also a little bit involved in the fitness center. Uh, I wasn't very regular, but I did the yoga sessions and all that. And some days the SSF would have, would have um, free meals day and snacks, and then I would go and get those. So I think Seneca just offers a lot of opportunities. You just have to find um, what works for you and then just uh, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. If you're interested in joining student clubs, you can definitely do so at www.ssfinc.ca and check out the different clubs that they have. And if you don't see one that interests you, then you definitely can start your own. So there's nothing stopping you from joining clubs or even creating your own. Uh, so. Adabola and Joseph, I will end with the last question, second last question to both of you. Uh, what services did you find helpful to you at Seneca and which ones would you recommend for students? Um, I would recommend um, like just check for anything that you need. So I was that student who would go to financial services and ask them about um, available bursaries and know what I could qualify for. And I got a lot of those bursaries. I think people were not applying, maybe they didn't want the money, but I kept applying and I got a lot of them. So financial services is one that I would recommend for students. Uh, also the student life is another one. I took all the leadership program and um, I completed all the leadership courses, the workshops, and they really helped me to strengthen the work that I do in the community. Uh, I think um, also the food bank. I didn't really use the food bank, but I know that they, they have uh, the support student. I, 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 took a, I took some of those items. I also donated at some time. So yeah, that's another one that I will recommend. Uh, the 
uh, student accessibility um, department is another one. There was a time I was really overwhelmed because I do a lot of things. <laughs> so what I had to just go to them for some support and I had a um, free counseling session with them. And then the health, uh, the Seneca Health um, Center, I think it's medical center now, is another one that I used uh, a few times. I then also my dental plan, I never, I didn't op opt out of it throughout my time at Seneca and I didn't even use it. So it was almost just wasting. And then my final semester, I just went to, um, to do some dental, uh, to see a dentist and I did some uh, I removed a tooth that has been hurting for a very long time. So yeah, so there's a lot of them. I, I used all of those ones that I mentioned and I will just encourage everyone to um, find out the ones that you need. Uh, but surely I would strongly recommend the financial services, the student life leadership program. Yes, and the accessibility program too. Excellent, thank you so much for that insightful information. And Joseph? Yeah, just to echo what Adebola was saying, I think one of the key outcomes that we want you to have as a student is really taking that step to advocate for yourself, because even if you don't know which service to go to, just reaching out to one, they can connect you to the right one as well if you're going, if, uh, if you have a specific question that they can't specifically answer. So, just to add on to kind of what Adebola was saying, I think the Pathways service was really great for me, especially when I was considering my options for degree studies at Seneca. And as a degree student, I think the Pathways service about with the Grad Expo was really helpful as well because I really started reaching out to schools and letting them know that, you know, I joined, I reached out to you because you came to Seneca and did a presentation. So really having that report and an interaction, they really remember who I was because I was taking that step in joining those Grad Expos as well. Um, and I also did use the personal counseling and accessibility learning services. Um, I myself initially didn't really use them throughout my diploma, but there was a specific circumstance I was going through in my fifth semester where I needed to really connect with learning strategists and get back on track with my studies. So they really helped work with me throughout my semester to develop a plan on how I was, how I was going to succeed and help me reach out to my professors to really see what supports they can provide as well. So definitely a great service uh, with personal counseling and accessibility services. And, and last but not least, I did use the career development services called Seneca Works. I connected with career strategists. They were able to help me with my interview skills, um, actually for this job at Seneca as well. And, you know, really helping me with my resume and giving me those professional um, standpoint of where I want to be long-term career-wise and understanding what I need to do to get there. And last but not least, the last question will be for uh, the entire panel. If you can give one piece of advice to students attending this orientation, what would it be? So I'll start with Shayna. Uh, so my advice would be to be confident with yourself. Know that you are pursuing things for a reason. You're on that path for a reason. Be confident in yourself. You can absolutely do it. Joseph? I would say just kind of living in the moment as well. I know um, for some of us, school feels like it went by so fast. So really enjoying all the steps that it takes to get you there, because once you graduate from your degree, um, it's such a feel good accomplishment that you really have accomplished something and you came to do your degree for that reason um, to you build upon what you've learned. So really live in the moment and make the most of your experience and really engage with the campus as much as you can, especially now with lots of more opportunities to be in person if that's what you want to do. And Adabola? Yeah, I would say um, have clear goals and know what you want to achieve from Seneca and in life in general. I was that student, I was that diploma student who would talk to my professors about degree program, about master's program, about PhD program. And today I've completed a degree, I've completed my master's and I'm looking forward to the PhD. So um, I would say make good connections and use all the resources that you can use at Seneca. There's so many of them. Yeah, thank you. And last but not least, Aiden. Yeah, don't be afraid. Ask for help. There is so many supports available at Seneca, as you can see um, by this whole panel and our presenters before. So make the most of it. And even if you have a question, you're not sure where to go, ask anyone. Um, trust me, they'll point you in the right direction and uh, make sure you are good to go for the semester. 
So, thank you again to our student and alumni panelists for sharing your uh, inspirational and motivating thoughts and journey with us. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules. I know that you have a lot on your plate, all four of you, and uh, just coming here to ease some of the concerns our students have and also to answer their questions. I know that all four of you remember what it was like for yourself when you were uh, coming into a new institution and transferring from one uh, credential to the other. So we do really appreciate you taking the time and I am truly thankful for all of you for joining us as always. And at this time now, uh, we will move into the formal question and answer portion of today's orientation. I will uh, reopen the chat, so please feel free to enter your questions into the chat and we will do our best to answer your questions. So I'm just going to, yeah. So the chat is now open, so feel free to go ahead and enter your questions into the chat and we definitely will provide uh, answers to you as quickly as we can. Um, so, yes, please do go ahead and enter your questions into the chat. We'd be more than happy to answer your questions. So I see that uh, Charmaine has included the Pathways website into the chat for everyone to see. So thank you very much, Charmaine, for doing that. Uh, so I do have a question here. Are all of the services available to part-time students if they convert from full-time to part-time transfer student? So, uh, yes, the services that we are presenting here today are available for all students to attend. Um, if there's anybody from the panel that also would like to add in any information uh, with regards to the services being available to part time students, if they convert from full time to part time transfer student. As for Seneca Works, our services and resources are available for all students, full-time, part-time. Uh, even if you take one course, um, you're, you have access to all of our services uh, for two years as well after you graduate. Okay. I do have a question here about OSAP. Uh, when Seneca sends the enrollment, usually to the ministry for OSAP purposes, so usually they do wait until day 10 of classes just to make sure that you are staying fully registered into the courses. Unfortunately, we do not have somebody here from the financial aid office, but you definitely can check the financial aid website and reach out to them at finaid, F I N A I D dot info at SenecaCollege.ca and you can definitely also ask that question to them specifically. Um, so we have another question about the benefits. Are there student benefits, health, medical, and dental? I was working full time, but now I've lost them because I'm heading back to school full time. Absolutely, you do have a health and dental insurance plan. If you visit www.wespeakstudent.com and you'll be able to access all of the information about the health and dental plan. So there is coverage that you do have available for you. I would like to know for the pathway program from level five, can I only complete the rest of level five to level eight to get the degree? I'm thinking, is that a question for Jen and June? Because I'm not quite sure about the levels. I feel like I would need a bit more information. Is yes. this a so, student coming from a diploma to a particular degree and which degree? So, Jane, if you could provide us with some more information, then we probably would be better able to answer that question. I've noticed that the questions are coming through only to me directly as a private chat, which is perfectly fine. I'll just continue to read the questions out loud. When transferring from a diploma to a degree, do we need to fill some forms to transfer our credits? So, I'll pass that over to you. 
So if you came to Seneca on a formal pathway agreement from a particular diploma to a particular degree, no, you don't need to apply for transfer credit. Uh, the credits or exemptions that you will be awarded as per your block map um, will automatically be processed to your account. We already know ahead of time. Is it possible to fix a time conflict if each of the programs have one class? Uh, that would be something you should reach out to your student advisor about. And I'm going to put into the chat the Learning Center's website as well, so you can have that information. I see Hannah has inputted Seneca Works website. Do I get a new one card or uh, where to upload the VAX doc. So I definitely will put that information for you in the chat. Uh, it's a virtual one card and it's through the Seneca Safe app for the uh, vaccination documents and then the virtual one card. And then I see Derek also put the information into the chat again. Thank you, Charmaine, for We Speak Student, Seneca Libraries, Learning Centers is all there. So I've gotten through all the questions that were sent to me publicly privately. So if you have any further questions, please do go ahead and enter them into the chat. Um, I will ask Charmaine if you kindly could take a look at the chat, if you see any coming in, um, just in case while I step away. But uh, I do have one that came in. What will happen if a student fails to complete their mandatory work term? Is there any other way to finish their graduation? And they're in the BMI program. So the work term is mandatory, um, but I mean, if there's some particular reason why you absolutely can't do it, I mean, I would definitely reach out to your program coordinator to have that discussion. I don't know if there's anything else that you can do in place of that, um, but you would have to have a, a discussion with them. Can I take some courses in the summer to eliminate my workload? Uh, that depends on your program. Like I said, all students would ha who have come into a degree at Seneca based on a pathway. So if you completed a two year or three year diploma um, and you are now in an upper semester of a degree based on a pathway, you will have a completion plan. Um, and that completion plan, I'm going to put a link to our inbound transfer guide where you can look up your pathway and see your completion plan. Um, so, depending on when you start, if it's, you know, fall 2022, you should have a completion plan there starting in the fall semester. And ideally, you should be following that plan because courses are not offered every semester in a degree program at Seneca. So, if you miss taking a particular course in the fall term, you might have to wait till the following fall to complete it again. And that particular course could be a prerequisite for an upper level course. So it's gonna throw you completely out of whack and really lengthen your time here. So those completion plans are an easy way for you to follow um, and get all the courses that you need to take when they're offered, keeping prerequisites in mind. If you want to deviate from that plan, just you know because of work or just like things get in the way, Definitely before you do that, have a discussion with your student advisor on how that's going to affect your progress in the program. That's really, really important before you make those decisions. Okay, and there's a follow up question. Will Seneca arrange the work for us for the work term or do we have to search by ourselves? So I believe you have to do a work term prep course and you'll have access to a job board um, where you're going to be applying for jobs and competing with fellow classmates, going through interview processes and things like that. Um, if there's a particular job that you think would fulfill the requirement that you want to apply to, or maybe you're already working in a role that could um, fulfill that requirement, You'd have a discussion with your work term coordinator at that time to see if it can be approved for that placement. But yes, Seneca definitely has a job board where you can see jobs that are available that you can apply for. And this question probably best answered by Hannah. Uh, when is the best time to apply for on campus job opportunities? Yeah, so um, all the job opportunities are that we get are usually posted on the Seneca Works job board. So, uh, for example, if you're applying for for fall uh, positions, I would uh, encourage you to start looking now. A lot of the positions um, 
that are uh, available have been posted. You can also check with the different departments because sometimes every department might post their own positions as well. Uh, so check uh, departments like your student federation, SSF, uh, sometimes the learning center posts, posts positions and so forth. So make sure uh, you do that. And then for the winter semester, I would start looking uh, later on in the in the fall, so end of November, beginning of December, around that time. And the student life department, okay, shameful plug. Yeah, thank also, you. Also, <laughs> uh, also does uh, uh, promote for events uh, where they're hiring for as well uh, for our ambassadors on our Instagram page. So it's at Seneca S Life. So if you're not already following us, then please do so. I've entered it in the chat at Seneca S Life. Uh, the S is for student. And uh, if you follow us on Instagram, we're always posting whenever we are hiring for on campus job opportunities. We're also hiring for virtual opportunities. So always keep an eye on our Instagram account for whenever we're hiring to post some there as well. Uh, do we need to complete our work term if we have two plus years of experience in the same domain? So can we be exempted from the work term or co-op? That's something you should definitely talk to your work term coordinator about for sure. You might be able to do like a prior learning assessment for it um, just as long as it ticks all the boxes that they need uh, possibly, but um, it's not guaranteed until you have that conversation. I just wanted to pop on on that. Sorry. So I was actually exempted from my work term. So I had about 2 plus ex uh, years experience as well. And so with that, I did go through the PLA process, but that was something that I did speak with specifically my placement coordinator, as well as the work term coordinator, both of them. I worked with them. I discussed it with them. We made sure it was the right path for me before I went through the process because it is an approve or deny process. So absolutely, I echo making sure that you do talk to your coordinators first to see if you do apply for that. Awesome, yes, at any time, if any of the students have any input as well to add in, we truly appreciate it. And just in case you're wondering, PLA, it stands for prior learning assessment, just in case. <laughs> Just to add to that, I also applied uh, for that for um, two courses um, uh, and one was denied and the second application went through. So um, it's not it's it's not bad to to check with check in with your professors or your program coordinators and then you go through the process and you get to know if you're able to uh, apply the course or not. Yeah, we still do have some time for answering any further questions, so please go ahead and enter your information into the chat. We will be happy to answer any other questions that you have. Sure, I, I could just add something if that would be okay. Sure. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Thank you, Hannah, earlier for mentioning that the Learning Center also hires. I just wanted to mention that anyone that's interested in being a tutor, this would be a great time to put in an application as we are preparing for the fall term. And in fact, I was just speaking to a recent tutor who's graduated now, a recent tutor about their employment search, and they were commenting how a lot of employers kept asking them questions about their tutoring experience, just because they were impressed by the fact that not only did they understand the material, did very well in terms of their grades, showing how well they understood the concepts, but also that they could relay that material, explain it, use communication and interpersonal skills. So it really is a position that can help you going forward and it is something that employers will focus on in job interviews. So thank you. And so I was going to add one other thing, but I'm not sure if you have a question, Sha. Are you okay? I don't at the moment, so oh. the floor is still yours. <laughs> right. There's one other thing to add, and, and I cannot say this um, even close to as well as Adibola, Joseph, Shana, and Aiden said, but the amount of support that's available, I just wanted to follow it up by saying we'll often meet students in the learning center who, for example, they may be going from a diploma to a degree and they may feel a little bit overwhelmed just because it is a different experience in many cases um, where they may feel a little uncomfortable because, again, you know, different set of teachers and such. And as they start to improve, and this isn't just through the use of the learning center, but they're connecting with different services, um, they're finding that even if at first they felt they weren't doing as well as they had wanted to, when that improvement starts to happen, whether it's quick or it's gradual, 
they realize that, hey, as Shana said all, uh, earlier, I can do it. I'm, I'm big, they start to become more confident. Their self-belief starts to grow. And the best thing is to hear them expressing to their tutor, hey, this course that I wasn't sure if I would just get through before, I was just expecting to maybe pass. Now I'm expecting to do well. And as the term progresses, their expectations grow and grow. And you can just see how that confidence impacts various parts of their life. So I just really want to stress that, that be kind to yourself, even if at the beginning it's feeling a bit overwhelming. And we all feel that way when we're starting something new. There are so many people here to help you, as you've heard today. And we all work together, Imran's department, and all of us connect. And so we really want to encourage you to know that or to emphasize to you that all of us work together to see you be successful. That's the main thing. We want to see you succeed and we'll do everything we can to help you get there. So don't be afraid to reach out. It's never too early. And every question is a valid question. Some students tell me that they hesitate to ask a question because they feel they're the only person who has that question or it's, again, not a valid one. Again, every question is a valid question. So reach out, let us know what we can do to help you. And if you're finding that you're not getting the type of support that you expect in, don't be afraid to say so, because we're all flexible. We're always willing to do what we can to help you. So just wanted to add that because we have, we do hear sometimes that students can feel a little overwhelmed at the beginning. Thank you, Josh. No problem. I was just going to say the exact like sentiment that there is never a question that we won't try to assist you with. And if we don't know the answer, we definitely look to find that answer for you and get back to you with the answer or the appropriate person that can assist you. So I don't have any other questions still at the moment. We do have a little bit more time to uh, engage and answer questions. So please feel free to uh, enter your questions into the chat. We have a few more minutes. Um, yep. Seneca Pathways on Instagram information is there as well. Always updating new information, Charmaine's entering. And also thank you for putting the Student Life Instagram as well. That's truly appreciated. I'm going to put the student panel on the spot. Is there anything else that we didn't cover that you think would be of value to the students here tonight? How you balance the, I, I have a question. How do you balance your workload and your personal life and all your other uh, demands in your life? I don't think I asked anything like that. So there, I'll put you on the spot. Um, and since Adabol is the first person that I can see in the camera, I'll start with you. <laughs> so, yeah, I have a lot of support in my family. Uh, so I, I've got children, but I also have um, a partner who is very supportive. I have another person in my house who helps with the kids. So that helps me a lot. I, I do a lot, but I also have um, a strong support system. Perfect. Uh, Aiden? Yeah, that's a good question, Shaz. Um, like for me, I have like a full time job. I'm doing some courses through um, part time studies, um, continuing with my running. I have a dog. So, um, one thing that I always do is make a schedule. So, it's just the calendar app in my phone, but like every minute of my day is planned. Um, I do plan for like breaks, like free time, you know, just taking a break from the computer screen, and it does help me. Um, just because everything is like organized and I follow that list. If I don't get it done, I'll do it the next day and I sort it by priority. Um, so that's something that's really important to do. Keep organized, make a schedule and uh, use your calendar. Uh, Shayna? So I worked multiple jobs while also going to school full time as well. So it sounds like Aiden and I had very similar school lives. Um, it's just something that happens sometimes where you're trying to uh, make a career. You're also trying to get your degree. And so it did become very overwhelming at times, but it was really important for me to just identify those times. And I also had a calendar. I, I didn't use my phone surprisingly, but I had a calendar on my wall. I had an agenda, a paper agenda. I also had a to-do list. I made sure, again, I prioritized just like Aiden said and made sure that I also had that time for myself. And so usually I would set a time limit saying after 8 p.m. I am not doing anything. Everything that is past that time is for me and then I can start again the next day. So really setting those time limits helps to make sure you prevent that burnout. 
I wish I had your dedication to those time limits. <laughs> Put the phone away. And lists, lists, and more lists. I have many, many, many lists, especially with orientation around the corner and starting from now. And Joseph, last but not least. I'm similar to, to, to Shana and, and Aiden. I haven't really started using the calendar until I came to Seneca. And I was always old school and writing my notes, writing things on a calendar, but I started using my electronic calendar as an employee because I would get, you know, meetings and invites and different things I need to join. So I started encompassing my calendar for everything rather than just work. And it really helped me stay on track with what I needed to do. And having my calendar and my phone connected to all my emails really helped me understand that I need to prioritize school, but I also need other things prioritized like myself, right? Having that time for self care, like Shana said, having that deadline where you can't do work after eight is perfectly fine. Just as long as you tried your best, you know, throughout the day and not wanting to put too much stress on yourself either, because there are times throughout the day where you may not be as motivated or, you know, you may not do your best work because of, you know, tiredness, or maybe you, you're missing something. So while you're taking time to schedule your work and your school, you want to take time for yourself and also eating. I don't know about yourselves, but I love eating breakfast and I find that super important to start my day. And I know a lot of students neglect that. So if you are running late and you have an in-person class, take advantage of the free breakfast at SSF between eight to 12, because you want to make sure your brain is nourished and you're taking that time to take care of yourself really and find those skills that really help you. Everybody has their own way of organizing their time. I spoke with my learning strategist, you know, with personal counseling accessibility and having that calendar really found was really beneficial for me. So finding which skill works for you too to organize your time really helps as well. Okay, that's fantastic. And as, as usual, I'm not surprised that even with my like random question out there to you, you totally nailed it perfectly. So I can't say anything further other than thank you. Thank you. Thank you for providing the information that you have today to all of the students that are in attendance. Doesn't look like we have any other questions that are coming in at this point. So I will bring the formal part of the event to a close, uh, including the question and answer period. So again, thank you to everyone for taking the time to join us. And thank you very much to our panelists and our Academic Pathways team as well. I hope you found the session helpful. We will be sending out a survey in the next few days to all those who attended, and we would truly appreciate your feedback on the event. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon or evening, depending on where you're joining us from around the world. Take care, everyone, and thank you again, everybody.